With so much hype about machine learning lately, with the advent and the total dominance of LLMs, more and more people are asking me, how do I get into the industry? So let's talk about how I would do this in 2025 if I had to start over again. I will share a path that I have seen work over and over again in my life and in the lives of those who I've been able to coach into these careers. But first, a little about me. I started out as a physicist and then converted to a software engineer, but I always had a special place in my heart for ML techniques. The techniques where you don't have to write all the rules, you just give the computer a whole bunch of examples and it figures out the rules for you. So even back in my college days as a physicist, I wanted to create a small robot that followed me around. I was never truly successful at this. The other thing I tried to build was an early version of Google Photos. You see, I just got into digital photography. And when you go from film to digital, you start taking so many pictures that you cannot keep track of them. I wrote a small script that was able to retrieve photos of my dad from a couple of years ago or photos of my old house and trained it on a very limited set of data. That experience taught me a lot. It taught me how to learn. It taught me what's hard about machine learning. And it taught me about concepts like overfitting before I even knew the word. So when I finally took some formal courses, like Dr. Ng's Stanford course, things clicked almost immediately. And then I transitioned my career from a software engineer to a data scientist to an ML engineer where I've stayed ever since. I guess now I'm technically a content creator. Hmm. So instead of asking, which course do I take first? I want to introduce you to a five-step proven system that works again and again. And it's simple, but it takes some time. I encourage you not to skip steps because you'll be sorry if you do. And the very first step is that you have to know why you're coming to machine learning. People often think that MLEs get a lot more money. And while it is true that for the same level at a big company, ML engineer would get about 15, 20% more than like a full stack engineer. If you've been doing full stack for 10 years and machine learning for zero, you're not going to be at the same level. Furthermore, I don't know what the industry is gonna look like five, 10 years from now. It's possible that with the influx of folks we're getting now, the salaries would get depressed or maybe they'll skyrocket. I can't tell the future. Salary is the wrong reason to come to machine learning. While I can tell you what some great reasons are, I need you to own this part of the process. I need you to know why you want to do this. As always with growth, the process is gonna take some pain. And so just like me, I encourage you to find a project that you can do for yourself. Yes, don't worry about what the employer is gonna think of your project. This is not a thing you're going to show to anybody, but this is something that improves your life today. If you can't come up with a project that can improve your life today that involves machine learning, then I'm sorry to say this career is probably not right for you because lots of it is trying to understand where the innovation marries practicality. Lots of it is defining requirements and seeing what an actual user can benefit from. Nobody knows you better than you do. Whether you're interested in photography or music or hikes or food, there are lots and lots of applications for machine learning. Which one project, if you could accomplish it and never go into ML as a career, would still be worth your time. Start with that, fall in love with machine learning. When the things get hard, you need to be able to go back and say, I figured this out, I can do it again. Also, this will really, really ground your learning. Remember how I said I learned about overfitting the hard way? Well, most of us have. For every advice I give a junior engineer today, you bet there is a skeleton in my closet or a rake that I've stepped on. This is a hobby project. Enjoy it, love it. But hobby project will only take you so far. If you've ever been to my house, you know that I love hobbyist electronics. And I can sort of put together some things without any electrical engineering background. However, one year I decided to put holiday lights on our house. And I took a strip of lights, attached it to the front, waterproofed it as best I could, wrote some code, and it even worked for a couple of years. But you know what happened then? Well, I'm not an expert on waterproofing. I just kind of picked up some things here and there and figured this would do. So the water sipped into some of those channels and before too long, the lights permanently attached to my house stopped working. This is the first year when I've been able to get rid of them and I'm working on an alternative. But the point is, it helps to actually know the theory behind what you're doing. It helps to know why your waterproofing didn't work. And so I encourage you to take classes at this point, but now you've had a practical experience and you can ground whatever you're learning. The classes that you need to take are probably not about the latest and greatest LLM, not at first. 
Understand how we do learning. Understand concepts like explore, exploit, or bias variance trade-off. The more that you understand, the more big picture will come together for you. I'm not saying that you need to spend an excessive amount of time here, but a couple of months of dedicated learning will really go a long way to helping you with every step from here on out. Every person who comes to this career from somewhere else has a history, and that history is unique. If you come from data science, there are actually quite a few things you already know, and maybe what you need to pick up is the software engineering principles. If you come from software engineering, well, then machine learning principles are the ones that you're missing. Having done a project to the point where you can get results from it day after day and not until the first rain comes, you now know what you need to learn. And so focus on that. You don't need to repeat stuff you're already an expert on. But do focus on skills that you do not yet have. If you need further grounding, it's pretty interesting to go through the job postings and see what kinds of things are required by basically every employer today. If everybody is talking about Kubernetes and you have no Kubernetes knowledge, this is a good time to acquire some. But I don't want you to be stuck in theoretical land for too long. People do this. They take class after class, complete tutorial after tutorial, but just like in the beginning, building is essential. Do take a dedicated month or two or three to learn, but have a very well-defined idea of when you're going to stop. You're never going to know everything. I don't, and I've been in the industry for 14 years. This is where you need to start thinking about your career. And this is where the question that everybody starts with comes up. What project do I do that will impress the person on the other side of the interview? Guess what? I've been the person on the other side of the interview and I have seen so many Titanic survival studies. Don't do that. Let me ask you this. If you were trying to become a rocket builder and brought a Lego rocket like this to your interview and said, see, I clearly know what I'm talking about. I built this. How would that go? The problem is that too many of us do this with ML. This rocket is no good until it can carry actual people into space. Then I want you to come work for NASA. But unlike NASA engineers, you actually have everything that it takes to show that you can do the work of an MLE. How? Through a project that people actually use. It could be a high quality open source contribution that is accepted by the project committer. It could be a paper to a conference like NeurIPS. It could be a freelance project that somebody paid you for, or it could simply be a project that lots of users use. You actually have a possibility of creating something and giving it away for free that people can use to solve their own problems. You already know how to build a project end to end. You learned it in the fall in love section. You can make it open source, but realistically, a hiring manager is not really gonna go through much of your source. They might look at your documentation, but that's about it. Now, I see lots and lots of pushback when I give this advice. I can't create a project that people use that requires a front end, that requires some sort of marketing, that requires lots and lots of aspects that are not just machine learning. And to that I say, well, congratulations, you figured out what the job is. You actually come up against intractable problems like this all the time and a good MLE knows how to maneuver through them. So for example, I don't have a front end. Do you need one? What if you just wrote something that summarized a certain source and sent out a newsletter every day? Hey, these are the latest things that happen. That does not require front end. That you can do entirely by yourself. What about marketing? Don't I need to get users? Yes, yes you do. Understanding how to get users is actually essential for our job. And understanding how to get users is about selling. And people say, well, I work at a big company, I never sell. Guess what? You do. When you work in a big company, your project competes with seven other projects that are equally as important. And what you need to do is you need to convince your VP to fund yours, to make sure that that work continues. Selling, unfortunately, is part of the job. Making sure that your scope moves forward involves a lot of marketing and selling. Sadly, you do not get to call yourself a professional actor just because you like acting. You actually have to get people to pay you for it. You've had an acting job where you got paid? Oh, that is not the definition of professional. Same with machine learning. You're not a professional machine learning engineer until somebody pays you for it. How do you get a job? Well, I already have some content on that and I will have much more. But this is about preparing for interviews, making sure your resume goes to the right place, and sticking with it through several rounds of rejections, refining your process, and getting better and better. The iterative nature of job applications 
is similar to the iterative nature of ML. You wouldn't quit just because your model fails to converge on the first try. So don't get discouraged when the first answer you get from a company you really wanted to work for is no. You will eventually get there. And if you're already at the looking for the job stage, check out this video next to see how the ML system design interview should be done.